as the title states, this will be a short video about how you can get a gun in Sweden. Now, this video is not primarily aimed at Swedish people. For you, I would recommend looking for your nearest gun club and see how you can get things started that way. But this is more for the people who, in surprise, exclaim, WHAT?! YOU CAN GET A GUN IN SWEDEN?! Every time I mention one of my hobbies. And uh, it's getting a bit tiresome to explain it all. Because there are some rules around the entire thing. And there are some checks and balances. And I thought I would spend this sh short video by simply giving you the layout of how it's done. Because the system is a bit tricky. And uh, it takes a while getting used to. So, let us say you want to start shooting. Uh, well, take competition shooting for this example. Hunting has other rules. Uh, for hunting, you have to take a hunting exam. And after that, you can pretty much buy your gun of choice. A bolt action rifle. Or a shotgun. Uh, you can get a semi-automatic as well, but the police has been fighting those. Uh, not to mention that shotguns and bolt-action rifles used for hunting are under certain rules. Rules that frequently get challenged in court. Now, for competition shooting, it takes a bit longer. And it's a bit more complex. The first thing you need to do is find a club near you. And it's better be a good one too. A club that does a lot of different shooting sports. Because the entire foundation of gun ownership in Sweden is having a reason to have the gun. You can't own a gun because you want to own a gun. You have to do something with it that is the reason for its use. And competition shooting and hunting are the two most common ones. On the paper, you can also get one for self-defense. But I have never ever heard of one getting issued. So, you have found a good club. And hopefully they have beginner classes. Because... Most clubs will require you to take a beginner's course before you can join the club. Either you can take the beginner's course at the club you're about to join, or you could take the beginner's course somewhere else and join the club of your choice later if that club doesn't have a beginner's course. But most clubs require it because you need the pistol shooting card. and. Without the beginner's class, the, getting the pistol shooting card is a bit trickier. Because the beginner's class will introduce you to the basic things like... Uh, how to actually use the gun safely. And how to aim and everything like that. A good beginner class is usually 6 or 8 lessons. And should cost you about 250 US dollars. And once you have that, you can usually join the club that has the beginner class. Now, once you have that and your pistol shooting card, you can participate in national competitions. Usually these are precision, that's bullseye shooting for you yanks. Or Nordic Field. Nordic Field is a kind of shooting that's very popular here in Scandinavia. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a bit different, difficult to describe, but basically you shoot a number of targets on time and then you get scored for amount of targets hits and also there can be restrictions, like you can only shoot two shots in one target and you have to spend uh, your shots differently, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I love Nordic Field, I can talk to death about it. Now. There are special rules before you can actually buy this pistol. Uh, the first one is the six month rule. And that means that from your membership into the club, 
uh, all clubs in Sweden have agreed upon a six month waiting period until you can actually own a firearm. And uh, this is once again to prevent people from just thinking, hey, I want a gun! And this is basically our waiting period. And it's agreed upon between the clubs. I don't think this is actually a legal mandate, but it's agreed upon between the clubs and our national sporting uh, organization. During these six months, you are heavily encouraged to take the gold standard. And the gold standard is scoring 46 points with only five rounds from 25 meters three times within a year on a Olympic target. And that's one-handed only. You can't cheat and do it two-handed. And someone needs to sign off on this as well. Now, the first gun you are going to get is a 22, usually of the marksmanship target variety. And uh, I know this sounds like a bummer for all the Yanks out there who can basically go and buy an AR-15 over the desk and shoot it the same day. But sorry, that's not really how it works here. Yeah. After yet another six months, you can purchase another pistol. Most to choose the 9mm or 45 or a revolver or another 22. It all comes down to what you're competing with. And fortunately, if there's something Sweden doesn't lack, it's competition. Swedes are fairly good in shooting sports. And I think this unofficial requirement for competition is a part of it. Because the competing spirit is very prevalent within the clubs. There are internal competitions and there are external competitions where people from different clubs meet. And as a new shooter, you are usually brought along to these competitions. I think I actually had four or five competitions before I actually had my first firearm. And that's in big part thanks to the inclusiveness of the clubs. And this is a very good thing. And uh, all your firearms need to be for this purpose. Uh, of course, there are some people who buy a 9mm and use it for more than one sport, and then there are those who have different firearms for different sports. Now, you are basically armed up. You have your gun cabinet, or rather gun safe, because that's also a requirement. You have to have a gun safe and it needs to be of a international standard. You can't just put it away somewhere behind your bed or something like that. If the police would find a gun under your bed, you would probably get hauled off and you would you lose your weapons. Speaking of losing your weapons, there are a lot of ways you can do this. You can get arrested for a major crime and the police can decide that you are no longer fit to own weapons. Your doctor can inform the police that you're no longer medically fit to own weapons. Though I have heard very few doctors actually using this, mostly because shooting in Sweden is not something you speak that much of. Uh, we There are a lot of competition and hunting shooters in Sweden, but we don't make all that much noise about us. So, there you have it. Now, this system has a lot of good things, and it has a lot of bad things. Uh, the good things, of course, is that crimes with legally purchased guns are pretty much nil. In the last... There has been one major case of a legal gun being used in a serious crime, and in that case, the gun club actually told the police, Hey, this guy's a lunatic, don't give him a license. However, since the club had filled out the paperwork that he could own a gun, and uh, the club can't really say that, Hey, this guy sh shouldn't own a gun to the police, that's the police job in the process. So basically both sides fouled up, and... Yeah, that's about it. 
The system is also very good on paper, and to my Swedish friends in the competition shooting, I emphasis on paper. Because I know there are a lot of problems, but as the system is on paper, I support it. Now, that brings us squarely into the bad things with the system. And the first of all is that our police do not obey the law. Yeah! That's a shocker, isn't it? Our police doesn't actually follow the law when it comes to issuing gun licenses. First of all, waiting for guns can take long. And I mean, the police may take 9 to 10 months. Yes, months to actually issue you the license. And they can also decline you the license without any legal foundation to do so and yes i'm emphasizing that because when i'm saying it out loud like this it sounds fucking ridiculous but they can deny weapons mostly semi-automatics for hunting by oh it looks like a military rifle yes that is a real reason and ipsic shooters have had major problems getting their licenses for AR-15s, guns they need to compete in their sport to use. And we had this fucking ridiculous case of a national champion uh, who had eight medals being denied a license for not competing enough. It's fucked up. And I'm just scraping the surface here. And what may make this worse is what we call the EU gun ban. It's basically something along the lines of the National of, uh, or the European Firearms Directive. I don't know its real name. Uh, we just call it the EU gun ban because that's essentially what it is. And we've been majorly screwed over by the European Parliament in this. And uh, basically we don't even know what the fuck it's going to do. Worst case scenario, all semi-automatic weapons, including the pistols I own, are going to be banned. That's the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is that they realize it's all just basically a witch hunt. They feel that, oh, we can't do anything about the illegal arms flowing into the Union and the fact that illegal arms are very easy to purchase. Instead, they think, oh, competition shooters and uh, hunters, they are suspicious. Ooh, we need to get rid of those guys because they are suspicious as fuck. Oh, God. I know I sound like a bitter old man discussing all this, but hey, uh, you try living with under the shadow of your entire sport getting banned because of fucking terrorists that doesn't even use the same weapons you do. Hell, if a... Anyway, this video is dragging on, and while I thank you just been watching it because of all of the glorious gun shooting in the background, I think it's about time to wrap it up. So, to sum it up, guns can be owned in Sweden. A large number of guns, mostly semi-automatics, can be used in Sweden for competition shooting. And we have a lot of problems with the police and our government who seeks to further limit our ability to own guns. And that would probably sum it up all nicely. Hope it has been entertaining and hope you learned something from this. And I'll see you next time.